All right, gang. Um, came across some videos on YouTube uh, where they were giving people tips uh, on snorkeling. And so I thought I'd make one to include all the tips and tricks that I've learned from giving, uh, you know, taking our customers snorkeling on the tours and snorkeling that I do with my friends. So um, I just made the clip about the, uh, the fins, the flippers that we have in our tour vans. All right. So one of the first things you're going to do when we go snorkeling is to pick out your fins or flippers. So in the back of all of our tour vans, we have the flippers in the gray bin here. And so we have all the sizes from um, like size one to three for the kids all the way up to like size 17. <clears throat> so the sizes are here on the bottom. So these are size uh, 12, 13. So that's American shoe size or 45, 46 for the international sizes. So you wanna go through here, pick out your flippers. You wanna make sure that you try them on because we're gonna be walking down to the beach and um, you get down there and you find out you have the wrong size and you have to walk all the way back to the van and so that might be a, a long walk sometimes depending on which spot we go out to. So you wanna try them on. Make sure that they fit. You don't want them too tight, but you don't want them too loose either. You wanna make sure that it's not gonna come off on, on your heel whenever you kick. So that's a good fit. Um, once you get them on, you don't want to walk around in them because that will ruin them. And uh, so you don't want to put them on until we go down to the water. The best way to put on the flippers is in the water and then don't touch the bottom uh, so you don't get sand in them. I'll demonstrate that in the next clip. But um, you see that... Uh, Almost all of our uh, flippers are from uh, snorkel bobs, so they're this all, all the same uh, solid blue color. Um, we do have some other ones, but a lot of the other people that we'll see out snorkeling will have these flippers like this that are from the ABC stores, and they're either blue, green, or orange. And uh, I kind of like the fact that we have all the same color fins. So it makes it easy for me to spot my customers when we get out mixed in with other people. Um, so yeah, so you want to pick out your flippers, get them sized up, and then the next thing that we're going to do is uh, size up your mask and get it ready. So we'll do that in the next clip. So there we go. So now I'm going to start off with the mask. Um, so these are the masks that, that we provide here. These are from uh, Snorkel Bobs. These, the, the set, the mask and the snorkel together, these are about $118. Um, there are snorkel sets that you can get at the ABC stores here for like $12. Or you can go up a notch, you know, like Walmart and some better stores have the uh, like U.S. Diver uh, brand for about $27 uh, but these are really awesome uh, the, the rubber on them is a uh, really nice surgi surgical rubber and so it really adheres to your face really well it keeps a really good seal um, the, the snorkels are really good it's got the uh, you know so that the water can't come in this has got a swivel on it right here to adjust the cant to your mouth um, and it's you know they demonstrated it as being like uh, indestructible but if anything does break they're you know they'll replace it so one of the first things you're going to want to do is uh, to adjust the mask to fit on your face and so there's this here a lot a lot of uh, before we got these better snorkels 
um, a lot of our customers would end up breaking these things trying to adjust them and several different brands and they had different ways of adjusting them but most of them it's it's like a like a lever that you have to let up one way or the other and then let the snap the, the slack through and there's these little notches here and so you'll adjust it and you want to get it to where it fits on your head um, most snorkels will have on the back piece it'll be in two sections so when you put it on the back of your head you want one piece to be low and one piece to be high and then for the girls if you have your hair up in a ponytail knot then there's the hole right here that fits perfectly into that knot and so you're gonna get the mask on you want it to be a good seal so uh, take take your hands and press it in like that and whenever you pull on it you should get a good seal to where it doesn't pull away and it sticks to your face and oh you hear it pop whenever I pull it away it pops pop. so that's how you want it and then so you keep one piece high and one piece low make sure it's not twisted so that's how you want that and then the snorkel on the side to go into your mouth a lot of people because they're right-handed like it on the right side it doesn't really matter once you get used to it but I find that most of the snorkels are set up so that the cant goes towards your mouth if it's on the left side for some reason I don't know so that's that and then so once you've got it sized up then the next thing you want to do is make sure that it's really clean because cleaning cleaning the mask will prevent it from fogging up so I use toothpaste so we, we wash these beforehand you know dip them in some uh, Clorox breeds and water to sanitize them and then use some like uh, Joy or Dawn dish soap to wash them really good and then put the, the toothpaste and rub it around on the inside the point is is that you want the glass to be really clean because in order for the fog to adhere to the glass um, it needs like a dust particle to cling to so if it's perfectly clean then there's nothing for it to cling to so smear that around on the inside and then you'll take it down to the water and wash that off and then once you rinse it off I like to, uh, to shake all the water off of it tap it a couple of times and get it as dry as you can before you put it back on another thing too that you can do when you're putting the toothpaste on your mask in order to, to clean the glass if you want to take a little if you have a little bit of leftover uh, toothpaste you can put it on your uh, on your mouthpiece there uh, you know if you're really uh, suspicious about your mask being clean you can use that to clean your mouthpiece too and uh, then you have that nice really uh, toothpaste uh, taste for for a little bit at least where it, it uh, tastes nice and clean another point about the, the flippers is that uh, if you can't find the right size or if you're worried about getting blisters on your feet or if you want to just keep your feet warm there's these uh, socks that are made out of the neoprene like, like a wetsuit uh, even though these are extra large uh, my, they kind of crimp my toes so I've, I've cut the ends off so that my toes stick out but still it keeps me from getting blisters on the knuckles of my toes and my feet and then if your flippers are, are a little loose in here these will help fill that gap and make them fit a little better and it also keeps you warm when I go snorkeling I usually stay out for like two hours and you start to get cold so that'll help with that so the next thing is the is the wetsuit so I, w I wear the wetsuit and then another thing too is uh, for sun protection I'll also wear a long sleeve lycra shirt in order to help protect me from the sun because I get a little uh, worrisome about sun cancer now that I'm getting up into my 50s so I'll have the long sleeve lycra top which I can't find right now 
But uh, and and the, another good thing about that is that uh, a place that you wouldn't think to put sunblock to keep yourself from getting sunburned is the small of your back, right in here. And so I found that that wetsuit, when I'm leaning over, uh, it'll leave a gap there where I'll get uh, burned. But I can take the, uh, the the lycra top and I can actually tuck that into my board shorts and that'll cover that area there. So you still might want to put some sunblock there because the sun still does come through it. You know, you're going to be laying down. It's going to be right on your back. So you're going to put the sunscreen there. Another place that you're going to want to put sunscreen uh, for the guys, if you have a bald spot or if you're bald headed, you're going to want to put it on your head too. Uh, another thing that you can do to protect your head too is if you have an old hat that you don't mind getting in the salt water, you can put that on and then put your snorkel mask over that. Now, so here's one of the, my biggest tips uh, for whenever I take people out snorkeling. And, you know, I don't know what their limits are, so I'll bring a boogie board to use as a, like a flotation device. Um, if God forbid I ever needed to do a rescue to get somebody back into shore, I could throw them onto this and then I could paddle them into shore on this. Um, we end up using this a lot where people just get tired and they want to grab onto something. So I trail this behind me on a surfboard leash that I put around my leg and I trail it behind me so that it's always there for the people to grab onto. And then another thing that I do too is I take this leash here and I double it back into the loop here. Use the Velcro to put it up. And now I have a, a short loop right here where I'll, I'll have the surfboard leash on here too that I attach to my leg. So I have that in that part on the boogie board there. And then I'll attach this to my leg and I trail it behind me. And so people can have something to hold on to if they get into trouble. And then if they want to just hold on to the boogie board and look down from there, then I have this in, in, in close quarters where I can just pull on this and I can pull them through the water. And they can uh, they can still like hold on to the side of the board and look down and see the fish if they're not comfortable floating in the water on their own. Sometimes what we'll do is, uh, you know, people will want to get on the back of the board and, and, and hold on and look like that. But then you don't see much because, you know, you, you got to look around and you don't look forward when you're doing that. You're looking straight down. So what I'll get the customers to do is to move up and hold on to the board in this spot right here with one hand. And then you can float and you still have something to hold on to. And, and then I'm pulling them along like this too. So... Uh, so that's a good measure and then they can always grab onto it and then I have this attached to my leg pulling it behind me now whenever I do this and I'm trailing this behind me you can see that that, that that gets pretty far behind me and a lot of my customers they have a habit of whenever they follow me they follow behind the boogie board and I always tell them, you know, don't be behind the boogie board. But no matter how, how many times I tell them that, they always end up being behind the boogie board. So you want to be between me and the boogie board. Almost uh, shoulder to shoulder, but not quite. A little bit behind me so that I can still lead and point things out. Like if I see a turtle or a fish or something, uh, you're close enough to me that I can point it out. But I'm still ahead so that, so, so that I'm leading. So it would be almost like a, a formation how jets fly. And, uh, and then the boogie board is behind you. And, and so if you ever get uh, to where you start lagging behind, then the boogie board will come up to you and then you'll have something to grab onto. All right, so one of the biggest things to overcome with uh, snorkeling is getting used to breathing through the tube. So, obviously, when you put the mask on, this part here is going to be covering your nose. So, the big difference about breathing when you're snorkeling is that you're not going to breathe in and out through your nose. Uh, for one thing, if you do, then that's going to fog up your mask. And um, the other one is that in order to get air in, the only way in is through your mouth. 
So you're going to breathe in and out through your mouth only. And that's hard to get used to. I know as a little kid when uh, I would swim underwater, I would breathe out through my nose. You don't want to do that when you're snorkeling because that's going to fog up your mask for one thing and you need to get used to breathing in and out of the only hole that has access to air and that's your mouth. So. I recommend that before you get in the water, put your mask on and take some practice breaths through the tube and practice breathing in and out through your mouth only. So put it in your mouth and you kind of have to force yourself to breathe in and out through only your mouth. So take some practice breaths. So do that a couple of times and then you'll get used to it and the repetition of doing it and then you'll be able to do it in the water and uh, be able to breathe, just relax and breathe in and out through your mouth only. So another thing uh, you might want to do that you probably wouldn't think of if you're hurrying to get, get into the water to go snorkeling is uh, to do some stretches. I know uh, whenever I'm surfing or boogie boarding and I'm paddling for a wave, um, one of the places where I get a cramp is right here in my chest. So one of the stretches that I do is to lean all as far back as possible. Do that a couple of times and stretch that out right there. And then the other stretch, because you're going to be kicking with your flippers, is to do that, that stretch where you punch out. Hey guys, so it's like 12.30 in the afternoon and the sand is really hot. So I ran across the sand and got in the water. So I'm going to do the rest of this in the water. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and rinse the mask off. in your mouthpiece. Don't forget to get that part too. Alright, so it should be squeaky clean now. you put your flippers on in the water because once you have your mask on and your snorkel in your mouth you can then bend over and look down and see what you're doing and then you're just gonna put the flippers on like you're putting on socks so you could still snorkel in the mask I keep my flippers on the boogie board so I can just put them on one at a time. Usually I recommend that you put your back to the ocean so you can lean backwards into the waves. There you go. And then after that, 
you don't want to touch the bottom because then sand will start getting into your flippers and then that'll irritate your foot later. So now it's just to put your, put your face down and start snorkeling. Alright, so that was a little spotted box puffer fish. So I have a strap and a case to put the GoPro into. So this will go into the case. I'm gonna have the strap here that'll go on my wrist, and then this adjustable piece here that'll tighten it down on my wrist so you don't lose it. So I have this attached to my wrist now. And it's tightened down, so if I were to let go of the GoPro in the water, it won't sink to the bottom. In a little while, once we get out to deeper water, I'm going to teach you guys how to clear your mask. I have a couple of different ways of how to keep your mask from fogging up. Even after you've cleaned it really well, after about 30 minutes to an hour, especially if you're really exerting yourself uh, your mask will start to fog up and I've come up with some tricks on how to to uh, clear that uh, some people want to take their mask off and dip it in the water you don't want to take your mask off because it's really hard to put back on in the water where you can't touch bottom another thing you need to know how to do is your tube if you get water in it while you're snorkeling on how to get that out and it basically is just you want to take all of your breath and blow as hard as you can all at once so you get water in there you go and it shoots it out the top and then most snorkels now they have the sec secondary valve in the bottom so you might have noticed that water came out of there as well A typical thing this is why we're so glad that we've got these snorkel bob uh, mask uh, these little clips right here that holds the the snorkel tube to the mask they break a lot but these snorkel bob ones are guaranteed not to break and uh, one of my friends here that's what happened her her clip broke so we're having to uh... <laughs> yeah having to improvise yeah, so this is a, another tip for you, especially for the females with the long hair, is that you want to make sure that you don't get any hair in your mask, so because the, the hair will cause it to not make a good seal, and it'll wick water inside your mask. Well, they're dealing with their equipment issues over there with Samina's mask. Uh, I'll show you guys what I mean about uh, clearing your mask if it fogs up. Basically what you want to do is you want to let, let water in by tipping the bottom of your mask out like that. Keep the top part firm to your to your face and just pivot it at the bottom to release it like that. And that will let water inside. And then what I do in order to, in order to keep going without even stopping is uh, I'll, I'll do that and I'll do this all as one motion where I'll, I'll let the water in and bring my head up and give a kick in order to bring my face up out of the water so that the water drains back out the bottom all in one motion. That was hard to, hard 
to do while holding the camera, but... And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll purposely just let water in to my mask and just let it ride right there. People really freak out if they get water in their mask, but as long as it's not preventing you from breathing or, or seeing, it's okay. So I'll let a little bit of water in there and I'll just leave it in there. And actually, having that cool water in there will equalize the temperature and keep it from fogging up. And you can use it to swish around to, to clean the fog off. You can swish it around. See what I mean about people following behind the boogie board? Hey, another tip is uh, make sure you look around. A lot of people that get tunnel vision and they just look straight down and they don't look to their left or right. I always look around because I'm paranoid about sharks, so I'm constantly scanning. But yeah, look around. I, I've had customers that have swam right past a turtle and not even known it.
All right, and then the trick for getting out of the water, once you can stand up, take off your flippers once you get onto the sand, and then you can walk. This is the most people I've ever seen snorkeling out here. All right, last thing you want to do is rinse off fresh water, rinse off the gear. Get the salt water off of your face. And, uh... Rinse your sand off of the gear so that it doesn't get in the van. All packed up, ready to walk home. One important thing after you go snorkeling is water. Uh, salt water really dries you out. So we have coolers in the van with ice and water. So make sure you grab some water.